Good day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. All right, Monday morning here in Australia, market uh, again still traveling sideways, says it's down ever so slightly, so less than half a percent. Now again, it is still Sunday stateside time, so we're really waiting to see whether, or at least I'm waiting to see, whether there's going to be that Sunday move or are we back to, you know, where it pumps during the week and then retraces in the weekend. It'll usually follow a pattern for a while and if you can get onto that pattern fairly quickly, uh, there's definitely some trading advantages there, but you need to remember that it does not stay that way for a while. Like we've had periods where pumps on the weekend, dumps during the week, and then it pumps during the week and dumps on the weekend, and then where it's pumping midweek and dumping for the rest of it. But it usually stays in that pattern for a while. So if you can see those kind of patterns, then you can start to take advantage of them, at least in the very short term. Now again, I've got to tell you that that's not financial advice. That is just uh, something that I've seen uh, and nothing I ever say is financial advice, but I have definitely used that to my advantage at times when I'm trying to buy things. Not so much sell because that's a short term sort of thing and I'm not really a trader. Uh, I do a little bit of swing trading on occasions, but that is something that I have noticed. So if you're a trader out there, there's definitely things, if you can see those patterns occurring and find them quickly, you can then get in and uh, take advantage of that. But again, they don't last for that long. So yeah, just something to consider. All right, so anyway, again, 2.87 trillion. Uh, so we're under that 2.9 trillion and definitely under the 3 trillion that we briefly uh, sort of touched for a while. BTC dominance still around sort of 42% uh, just hovering there. We can see there is a little bit of volume there. So maybe this could be where it starts to fire up again on the Sundays and Bitcoin still under $64,500. Gas prices risen ever so slightly. So again, the market's down, so it's a, a bit of a mixed bag. Some things have still performed and other things haven't. So what's done well in the last 24 hours? In the top 100, there we go. Loop ring, still on quite a run. Crypto.com doing nice. Litecoin making a nice uh, pull, uh, push back upwards. Waiting to see whether I can get over that $300 mark. Uh, Xcash, near protocol, quant. So we got some nice movers. Nothing sort of too crazy. Look, even Shib's made a little bit of a move there. Has it finally found its bottom or is this just a brief... Uh, a brief stop before it continues going down. That's what we'll have to wait and see. So again, you know, this was up around, I think 75 or something. So it's come down quite substantially. It might have even been higher, I can't remember, but I know it has come down. But eventually it will find a floor uh, and then most likely start to make its next way up. So one big mover, loop ring, that has really been doing well and I'm kicking myself that I didn't hold on to loop ring. But look, it just, you know, it performed really well for a while and then went quiet. But that's what a lot of cryptos do. I mean, even, you know, Litecoin pumped earlier, I think last year or earlier this year, I can't remember which one it was. And then it was just really quiet for months and months. And now it's starting to make a move again. So yeah, again, if you're an investor, probably best to just hold. And when things start to pump, take some profits and then wait for it to sort of, you know, go quiet again and then buy back in uh, is definitely a, I mean, that's not really an investor strategy. That's more a, sort of trader strategy but you know it's not too hard to do that particularly if you go back and look at you know the way they've performed previously uh, and you're really good with the charts again I'm more an investor I just buy and hold really but I do do a little bit of again sort of swing trading and I definitely do like to buy low and sell high all right so what hasn't performed so well then there we go, Kadena again, a lot of these ones you're looking at here are coins that were pumping just the other day and vice versa, the ones that are pumping uh, today were ones that weren't doing so well the other day. So the, the losses, you know, one is almost, you know, a double digit loss and then everything else is just single digit losses and Kadena has performed outstanding. So I mean, you know, losing 9%, if you've been in it for more than sort of a week or two, this 9% uh, not something you're going to worry about at all. So again, a fairly sideways market and we can go over here and we can have a look. And look where Bitcoin is just bouncing around right now. It is just hovering on its old all-time high. So we had that breakout, came back down, retested it, hovering there and yeah, waiting to sort of see what will happen. And my gut feeling is, again, that I do think we're going to start to make our way up to that $88,000. It's just how are we going to get there? That is the question. I mean, again, everyone got super excited. No. Nah. 
again, retraced, you know, a third to two thirds of those gains. And that's usually the way it works. However much you've gone up, you can, again, it's not a guarantee, but you can almost guarantee that you're going to lose a third to two thirds of whatever gains you've made in a bull market we're talking about before it'll then start to make its way back up and it'll just keep repeating that process. But it's not always exactly a third or two thirds because I mean, look at this, we didn't lose that. We lost a very small amount, but just sort of roughly is sort of how it works. Again, look at that. And you probably lose around about a third of what you made. Then you go up and you lose a little bit so again, not exactly a third or two thirds, but that's just a sort of rough average that I use. If something gets on a bit of a run, by the time it gets to its top, probably gonna lose, again, around about 30%, sometimes, again, up to about two thirds of whatever gains you've made. And that is in a bull run only. All right, so again, I'm still expecting Bitcoin to kind of push up towards $88,000. Now, again, it really is that seventy dollars to $85,000 mark that I'm really kind of watching for. Just I get the feeling like we're going to have a fairly steep correction somewhere in there. But again, there's no guarantees in life. We may not, and we could absolutely go up to 88000 And then, you know, if we get this blow off top that everyone else that everyone's talking about, you know, coming in December, which is literally only two weeks away, well, then things will get pretty exciting. And and as I've said before, I don't see that happening. I think you know we probably have a correction from seventy to eighty five thousand, a pretty big one. And again, maybe push us all the way back down to, you know, sort of sixty, maybe even here down to sort of fifty uh, ish thousand dollars. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me, but again, there's no guarantees in life. Uh, I'm not 100% sold on that, but I definitely, you know, if we got up to sort of 85, 88,000, I think there would be a good pullback, and that's if we did that fairly quickly. You know, like in the next sort of week or two, if we suddenly found ourselves up there, then I think a big correction, not, not a big correction, but a decent correction would be coming. And um, yeah. I am unsure about whether we're going to hit that $100,000 mark this year. As I've said, you know, there's so many chart analysts out there and they're all predicting, you know, that again, this big blow off top. None of them have really come out and said exactly when it's going to happen. They're just saying they expect it. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised. I'm j I just don't think it's coming in December. That is my personal belief. Uh, just because too many people are expecting it. All right, so let's move on. Just a couple of stories I want to focus on. So Van Eck, they got rejected, or the SEC rejected their spot offering, but they have approved their futures uh, Bitcoin ETF. So disappointing that, you know, Van Eck's spot Bitcoin didn't get up. And I said this, uh, pretty sure it was yesterday or the day before. I don't see a spot Bitcoin ETF getting approved this year at all. And I'd be surprised if it gets approved in this in this bull cycle, again, unless we're in a, a hyper parabolic Bitcoin cycle, I get the feeling like Grayscale will probably be the first one to get a spot Bitcoin ETF approved. And I think that will likely happen uh, in the next uh, sort of bear market slash then, you know, leading into the next bull cycle, I think is most likely when it'll get approved. But we'll have to wait and see. It's disappointing that the SEC hasn't approved a spot Bitcoin ETF. But what we need to remember is there are spot Bitcoin ETFs around the world. It's just not in the USA. That's the place where everyone wants one uh, to happen. You know, the biggest financial hub of the world. But so far, it's all just futures. All right. This is very interesting and I'll be waiting to see what happens. So Tezos's NFT marketplace has been discontinued without any explanation whatsoever. And this is after they were making more than 50 million in uh, all time sales on the market. So just happened recently and the developer has not come out and given any reason why the NFT marketplace has been discontinued. So yeah, I mean, NFTs are super hot at the moment and yeah. It doesn't sound like it's a rug pull. I couldn't read anything in there that said it was. It just, for some reason, uh, has been shut down and gone quiet and people are waiting to see what is happening with that. I mean, you know, making $50 million, I'm guessing, in a very short amount of time seems to, and, and not the marketplace itself, they've had $50 million in sales, but they still would have been making money. I just can't, yeah, it'll be interesting to find out what has happened there because, Again, that whole NFT space is just on fire at the moment. So we'll have to keep a lookout and find out what has gone on there because that's 
it's troubling for anyone in Tezos because then what do you do uh, with those NFTs that you've got from Tezos if there's not a marketplace you can't sell anymore and buy anymore? Uh, I'm guessing someone else is going to step in and fill that void if there's uh, if this is really just going to discontinue uh, for good. There will definitely be someone to come in and fill that void, but hopefully it's just some kind of technical glitch uh, or something like that, uh, and it will get fixed soon for everyone on the Tezos network anyway. All right, last but not least, talked about this the other day, Discord uh, CEO came out and sort of made some tweets that they may be moving uh, to having a crypto wallet, and then there's actually been quite a bit of backlash on Discord about it, and so now they have backed out of it. But Twitter are going the other way. As we know, Twitter are already looking to have a Bitcoin wallet put into Twitter. So very, very interesting. Look, I think it's only a matter of time until Discord uh, do have a wallet integrated. They just had a bit of backlash. Discord's a lot of gaming and things like that. And you know, people came out and said, oh, you know, having... <laughs> you know, proof of work, you know, cryptocurrencies, they're bad for the environment and things like that. And that's that's true, but they are moving more towards green energy. Majority of them are in green energy these days. It's over 50%, exactly whereabouts, uh, we don't know, but it's just too expensive to run on the old kind of fuel anyway. All the taxes and all the greenhouse uh, gases are produced, and that's where the taxes are. Anything that's bad for the environment, they have to pay... Uh, X amount of dollars for all those kind of things. So it is actually cheaper to go towards green energy. And that is the way that, you know, Bitcoin miners are moving. And it'll be interesting to see if they stay proof of work. I mean, it'd, you know, it'd be one hell of a move for Bitcoin to go proof of stake, but maybe that's something they look into in the future. I know most cryptocurrencies that are coming out now are, are moving away from uh, proof of work and going to proof of stake and things like that. So yeah, we'll have to keep up on this. I was super excited to hear Discord might be uh, integrating cryptocurrency uh, into Discord uh, and they have yeah taken a backward step on that, which is a little bit disappointing. But again, I think it's only a matter of time. Again, I'd say, you know, the people that were like anti-crypto, I mean, they're just people that don't understand it. And again, you know, they're, they're thinking of you know the old proof of work system where a majority of cryptos aren't proof of work and even the ones that are as i said just before you know majority of them are using green energy they aren't using you know fossil fuels and that fossil fuels are going to be you know slowly but surely i mean you know we've had that big uh, climate summit happening and a majority of countries are moving away uh, by 2030 and 2050, I think like that, they're trying to get to near zero uh, at, uh, net em emissions of uh, fossil fuels, greenhouse gases and things like that. Now, they're not going to make it, not all of them, but at least they're moving towards it. And it is just a matter of time until they uh, all move away from things like that. It just will be too expensive because there will be no future tech being developed on those old sort of systems. It'll all be in the new systems and those new systems will become cheaper and cheaper. So... You know, long term, I, I think, you know, the entire earth, we do move away from those kind of things. But it's just those kind of things don't happen overnight. There's a lot of money involved and unfortunately money rules. Uh, and while we have those old systems in place that kind of still are slightly cheaper uh, because they don't have to change over to anything, there's there's the cost right there that's going to uh, slow a lot of them down there on, again, fossil fuels. They have to you know, get a whole new system to change over from those uh, to green energy that, you know, that money has to come from somewhere. And so that's a cost. And one of the reasons that a lot of places don't simply just jump over from something that they already have in place and all they're paying is the uh, maintenance and upkeep, they're not, have to, not having to put in complete new systems. All right, look, that's it for me. Not a whole lot happening again. I'm waiting to see if the volume's going to come through. I mean, Bitcoin, again, it did get down into that 62,000. It covered that CME gap. Uh, and now we can see, look, it's starting to push up. This was a little uh, smaller, that candle just before. So there we go. It's not time over there. So getting ready for early Monday morning. So I'm guessing they're not really going to get the Sunday pump. Uh, and most likely we'll wait and see what happens Monday morning stateside time, which will be Monday uh, night tonight here in Australia and see whether we start to get that big push up. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train and I'll see you next time.